All right, how's it going, y'all? So today we're gonna to be talking about the difference between Docker and other containers, but really Docker and virtual machines. And we're really gonna be talking about them for, for home users as well as business users. So in your home lab, is it better to focus on Docker containers or virtual machines? And my really quick answer to that is, you should use both. Docker containers are a great way to get started and run a lot of things very lightweight, but there's still a lot of stuff that virtual machines are just gonna be far better at that Docker containers really just cannot do. I'm gonna explain that all in this video. All right, and so now, before we get started on that, we need to understand what Docker containers are, what virtual machines are, and the easiest way to understand it is think about where we started. We started with applications. So if you're a business and you want to be able to run a service, maybe a website, you could just run it on your server and you could run five websites on your server. But what happens if one of those websites needs some maintenance and so you've got to reboot it. Well, now the other four websites had to get rebooted, even though the only one that needed to get rebooted was one of them. So that is one of the issues as well as with security. You don't want somebody to have access to all the websites. Instead, you want maybe some teams to have access to one of them. Some teams have access to the other ones. You want it to kind of all be segregated out and you want to be able to do updates on every single one of them. And so instead of running a bunch of applications on one server, instead we built virtual machines. Virtual machines are like having a bunch of different installations of Windows, Mac, or Linux all on one server. And so what you can do is for every single website you want to run, you can just spin up a new virtual machine. And that virtual machine pretty much across the board acts exactly like a physical machine. If you're just a user on it, you'd hardly be able to tell the difference. And so that is great because now instead of having to buy a different server for every single thing you want to do, instead now you just spin up a small server on a virtual machine. And so that is what virtual machines really start out for. All right. And so now this on the left right here is what virtual machines look like. So you've got your hypervisor down here. This right here, this brick at the bottom is all that one main server that's running the virtual machines. Then, you have a bunch of little virtual machines all running their own applications or multiple applications if they're kind of tied in together, all on there. And so this is great. These virtual machines are segregated off from each other. If one of them gets malware, the others are not gonna get malware. The guest OS right here does a great job of protecting in between them. And so it's great for security, uptime, availability, and migratability. You can take these virtual machines and you can move them around willy nilly. Some services even let you move them around without a second of downtime. So you can migrate them from one server to another without losing any data whatsoever. The virtual machine stays up the entire time, but it comes with a cost overhead of two different things. First off, you have to run the guest OS on there. So that means you have 12 copies of Linux running on there all doing kind of the exact same thing, those base operating systems. And they also have to take all the RAM you give them. So if you say each virtual machine needs three gigs of RAM, then even if they're only using 100 megs of RAM, they still have to have all that RAM allocated to them. There's some hypervisors that let you get around that, but we're not gonna to to talk about that for now. So this right here is what you end up with with virtual machines. Now, what is Docker? Docker is basically that minus the guest OS in between, which makes it more efficient. So instead of having a virtual machine for every single application you want to run, instead, you just have your one Docker engine that is actually running every single one of the applications pretty much on it. They are segregated off from a security standpoint where they are sequestered off from each other. So for the most part, App one cannot infect app two. Now it's always possible and it's technically also possible with virtual machines, but it's next to impossible with Docker containers. They are very secure, but they're not as secure as virtual machines from being able to get from each other, but it's great. You've cut out two really big overheads. One that Ram limitation I talked about earlier is gone. Whenever you're running Docker, Docker is running on your operating systems kernel. The one case where this is actually not true is actually if you're running Docker on Windows, 
Windows does not have Docker really. So instead what Docker does for Docker on Windows is Docker actually builds a Linux virtual machine on top of Windows and runs off of that. That's just because it would take way too much time and be kind of impossible to really build Docker out fully on Windows. And so instead to make sure it's fully compatible, they run Docker on its own Linux virtual machine and then run all the containers off of that. But by running on the main kernel, you save that RAM limitation where RAM can be easily allocated at up and down as much as you like. And you also don't have an extra overhead because you're running another operating system. Now that being said, virtual machines only have about a 2% performance hit is roughly what I'll say it's between two and 10% performance hit when it comes to CPU based off of running on bare metal. So it's really not that big, but Docker has that. The other major advantage of Docker is the fact that you can spin up and spin down these containers almost instantly compared to virtual machines. That's because they're using the main kernel, which is basically the, the program that runs your computer. When you need to spin up a virtual machine, you have to boot up an entire computer. And so that takes time to initialize. No matter how fast you're running, it takes time to initialize any operating system. With Docker, you don't have to initialize the operating system because the operating system is already running. It's using that kernel already. And so that's really where Docker came from. Docker originally came out to be able to have hyperscaling. That's where you've got 8 million people hitting your website in a given hour. You need to be able to scale outward incredibly quickly. And so that's what Docker was used for. Docker was able to be spun up almost instantly. So if your servers were getting hit really hard and you need 50 more servers right now, you can just spin up 50 more instances in a second. And then as they go down and as you don't get hit hard, boom, you can start bringing them back down. There's tons of stuff with that. And so that's where Docker originated. Docker originated way up at the hyperscalers like Google and all those massive companies who need that much. That's because they were trying to get around the limitations of virtual machines and get more efficient. But where Docker has also begun to really excel are the home labbers. And so we're gonna talk about why that is. But this is just the infrastructure I wanted to explain here on kind of what Docker is. Docker is basically a virtual machine running on the main OS's kernel for the most part. All right, so now that we kind of have the basics, let's talk about the process for deploying an application on a virtual machine in general. And we're gonna talk about the same way you do that on Docker. And we're gonna talk about this in terms of like home lab all the way up to like medium sized businesses who don't have massive IT departments. This is like how everything's actually done in the real world. So if I were to need to spin up a new web server, what I would do is I would log into my host. So X Zen orchestra right here. So I use Zen orchestra and these are all of my different virtual machines running on there. Say I needed to run a new virtual machine. I need to run a new web server. What I would do in here, is I would actually create a new VM by my template, choose where to go, all these different things. So I'd say, all right, I've got this template right here that actually speeds this process on a lot. And I would go ahead and I would basically build out a new virtual machine. So we've got this demo for video. We've got all this stuff already on here. So I would spin up a brand new operating system and then install everything on there. If it's gonna be a web server, I'm gonna install Nginx, Apache, PHP, whatever I need to install on there, I'm gonna install on there. I'm gonna to have to update everything as I require to. And I'm also, I'm just gonna to have to configure the entire thing. It's gonna be completely customized to exactly what I need, but it takes a lot of time. Now let's talk about how I would do that on Docker. So this is how effectively Docker is used. Docker has all this stuff for the most part pre-built out. So I'm just gonna run on my Synology, just come into the registry right here and say it's PHP my admin I wanna run. So I just type PHP my admin. And look right here, it's pretty much all set up, ready to go for you. There's a great man page that says what I need to deploy it. So that's really the core of it. Everything's already set up and running for you. You don't really have to do anything. And so the other thing is containers are really designed to essentially have one or two volumes for their configuration. So if they don't need to store persistent data, so for example, PHP my admin, it's just reading data out of a database. It does not need any storage of itself. So that means that if you look right here, there's no volume on here. All there is, is the password to the actual database. That's all you need. And so because of that, 
they are a lot easier. And the way you update them is very simple. You don't have to worry about stuff going wrong when you update it because what you do is you delete the container and rebuild it with the newest version. And so as long as those two are compatible, it's fine. There's no like, oh, I didn't update this package or this package. There's no really updating packages at all. And so for home lab and small groups, it is great because you can just deploy all these things on a Raspberry Pi. It is so efficient and so fast and easy that it makes deploying a bunch of services great. Now let's talk about where Docker containers fall short, and that is customizability and scriptability. So let's talk about MariaDB. So let's say we want to run a database. Well, one really important thing you need to do whenever you're running a database is you need to back it up. And backing up the actual volume where the data is stored is not enough. That's because databases have a lot of stuff in flight in the RAM. And so if you just take a snapshot of the disk and reboot it, it's going to be corrupted. You're going to have a corrupted database. Trust me, it's happened to me a few times. So instead, what you need to do is you need to make a script that runs every night or however long that dumps the entire database into something that is recoverable. And so I've got a script that I'm planning on doing a video for, but Docker is really not set up for that. Docker is not set up to just allow you to do that natively. And so that's one of the big limitations is when you're trying to do more advanced configuration like that, you don't really have the ability to do it. Another thing is SSHing. Say you need to be able to SSH in. You can do it, but it's kludgy, it's different. There's a very different process in there. And so Docker is not really the end all be all solution for everything. But really there's a great place to be in the middle between the two of them. So let's just talk about quickly kind of laying out when you should use which and why. So virtual machines are always going to be the most flexible. Anything you can put in a virtual machine. I mean, what you'll probably end up doing and what I do in my home lab is I have a virtual machine that runs on my Docker containers, or I've got a series of virtual machines for different Docker containers. So say there's a bunch of services that run in Docker and they're kind of self-contained. I don't want them talking to anything else and I really want them on their own section. And I want to be able to deploy and migrate them as I want to. I'll just spin up a new virtual machine and have five Docker containers in there. That is totally fine to do. And so virtual machines are just going to be your most flexible option. They're also going to be best for monitoring. So if you really need to be able to monitor something, you can install Zabbix on it, which I just did a tutorial for. Check it out in the description below. With Docker, you can't really do that. Now you could absolutely build the image and download it and configure it exactly how you want to, but reasonably that's very complex to do and not something that the average Docker user is going to be doing. Another thing is doing something like mounting another network share. So it is part of Docker is to be able to mount a SMB share for a volume, but both Synology and TrueNAS do not have that ability to in their stock Docker applications. You can't just mount an SMB share, even though that's something you need to do to make sure permissions work and things like that. So there's a lot of restrictions on Docker and that if you ever can't do something in Docker and you've got the RAM, you can do it in virtual machines. Now let's talk about absolutely when to use Docker. Docker is great to use when you have an appliance that you want to just make sure it just works and you've got all the pieces together. So say you want to deploy a unified controller. That's great for Docker. There are a little bit of oddities on how the networking works with unified controllers. So not everything will work perfectly, but that is a great option because it's really a self-contained application that you just want it to follow. However, unify wants you to do it. You want it to be able to work like that. Or if you need something to be able to be deployed very quickly and very lightweight, those are all great configurations for Docker. And it's actually why a lot of applications you're seeing now are going to be Docker only. That's because when you're using Docker, for the most part, people say this is always true. It's not true. For the most part, when you're using Docker, a Docker container running on any system will for the most part be able to run on any other system. When you try to do that with Linux, there are 500 distributions of Linux. Some of them it might work, some of them might not. And so for devs, having Docker containers is lovely because they basically have to build one image maybe two for ARM, and that's it. And so having the ability to just have few images that are compatible with so many different things has made it so that so many developers of these cool applications are starting to say, you know, we're only gonna support the Docker version. 
For example, Discourse, which runs my forums, it only uses Docker. They actually have an entire script using it. And so you actually have to run it on its own virtual machine for the most part, at least if you want to follow the standard operation. But it is really designed to run all on containers because they're so easy to update. And it's a really guaranteed config that you know the exact version that somebody's using there. And you don't have to worry about all these weird nuances because you're going in between the Ubuntu and Debian kernel versus the CentOS one. You just don't have those issues as to which package manager somebody's using and all that kind of stuff. And so at the end of the day, both Docker and virtual machines are really powerful. It's just really important to understand the difference between Docker and virtual machines. If you've got a Docker container and the image is already built, building out on Docker is going to use way less RAM and a lot less resources. And it's just going to work because you are pulling the official image. It is just going to work with that image. And if they are publishing an image, it's pretty much just going to work. And so that is the huge advantage of Docker. If you have an application you want to run that's got a built Docker container and you don't need a ton of customization to it, or you really want to be able to run something very lightweight on a Raspberry Pi, Docker is phenomenal. You can run them with basically application-like performance on something like a Raspberry Pi without having to allocate it specific RAM. And the compatibility is going to be phenomenal because the way Docker works is if it runs on one Docker container, it's going to pretty much run on all of them for the most part, especially once you look at different architecture types, you can have some issues, or if you're dealing with some networking things, I have seen issues, but for the most part, if it runs on one Docker container, it's going to run on all of them. Another great thing about Docker is the configurations. You've got all the configurations just set up for you and it's just there. They're also a lot lighter weight to back up because you only have to back up the specific parts that you require. But there are always things that virtual machines are just going to be better at. For things you need to customize, like a database where you want to be able to run a backup script often and have an rsync to a different location where once you've dumped that file, having that in a Docker container is just not great. Or if you need to be able to do specific networking things. Docker has this interesting Docker network that's kind of obfuscated from you and it uses port mapping to get back into your main network, but it's not a layer two connection. So if you need something to run on layer two without some funky host networking stuff, Docker doesn't really do that natively out of the box. And finally backups at the end of the day, you can do a Ram enabled backup for a virtual machine. I don't think you can do that. I've not seen that in Docker. And you know you can restore that exactly how it was because it's RAM enabled whenever you need to. Whereas with Docker, most things should work. The way they're really designed to be is stateless, but if they're not stateless and they're a database and they crash, well, now you don't have the backup. And so you've got to rebuild the table versus being able to go back to a snapshot. And so at the end of the day, you can use both of them. And I do all the time. All right, well, that's going to be it for this. If you have any other questions, go ahead and leave those on the forums. Have a good one. Bye.